In this video, I'm gonna help you make more money as a resident. As residents, our take-home pay is not very much, given the stress of being a physician in the hours that we work. And that's okay, that's just part of the training process in the United States. Between the crippling student loan debt, inflation, the housing market, it can be hard to stay afloat as a resident, especially if it's just you and you don't have a spouse or a partner. Luckily, as a resident, there are ways to supplement your income. That could be in the form of moonlighting, where you're doing extra clinical work, or various online ventures that you can do from the comfort of your couch. My preference is the latter. I like to do things that I can just do from home, and I don't necessarily want to be practicing more medicine than I already am a lot of the times, so these online ventures are a great option. What's going on, y'all? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jake. I'm a third year internal medicine resident in Texas, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways that I supplement my income in the form of side hustles. If you find this video helpful, I'd very much appreciate you liking the video and or subscribing to the channel. I make videos each week on anything and everything medicine and medical training. So without further ado, here are ways that you can supplement your income as a resident. The first thing that I do to supplement my income is paid medical surveys online. All you need is an NPI number, which you will have as a resident. I love doing these. I can do them on my couch while watching TV in the evenings. They're very easy. And the amount of money that you make for the time that you put in is much better than your normal clinical work as a resident. These surveys are a lot of times like pharmaceutical companies testing out new names for drugs that they're coming up with, or it's market research on certain diseases and how physicians treat various diseases and what drugs they tend to choose. They're very easy to do and they pay really well. Some surveys take 30 seconds and you make $5. Others are 10, 20, 30 minutes and you get paid more like 40, 50, or $60. There are a ton of different websites, but my very favorite is Sermo, which is actually like a Facebook for physicians exclusively. You can interact with other doctors online, participate in polls, but really the only reason I'm on Sermo is for the surveys. These surveys tend to not screen you out, even if you're a resident. There's actually an ongoing sign-up bonus, so if you're interested, feel free to find my email address in the video description below and send me an email and I can refer you, and we'd both make $10 if you sign up and start participating in surveys on Sermo. Again, there are a ton of other sites. I have signed up for all of them. If you want to know more of them, feel free to email me or comment below and I will respond and give you some other survey sites that you can participate in. The second side hustle that I did as a resident, especially as an intern, is tutoring and teaching for the USMLE exams. For a little bit, I was employed by one of those USMLE prep websites, but I quickly quit that and I went out on my own and just charged what I thought was a fair hourly rate and I tutored via Zoom. Tutoring and teaching is a great way to stay up to date on everything you learn for the USMLE exam, step one, step two, or step three. It's a great way to give back and it's very rewarding to help someone pass one of these major step exams. I would usually tutor for four to five hours a week and that easily was several hundred bucks that I was able to either invest in an index fund, put into cryptocurrency like Ethereum, or use as a little extra spending money. The third thing that I actually recently started is this website called Swagbucks. Maybe you've heard of it, but it's basically a website where if you sign up for various apps or participate in different things, you get paid in the form of Swagbucks, which can be redeemed as cash via PayPal. Uh, for instance, last year, there was a promotion to sign up for Uber Eats. And if you deliver just one thing on Uber Eats, you get paid $200. So I signed up for Uber Eats, spent 20 minutes delivering a cup of coffee to someone that was like five minutes from my house and I got paid $200 and that was that. Since then I've made a lot more money on Swagbucks downloading various apps. For instance, they had a promotion with Chime where if you download the Chime banking app, you get a $300 bonus if you deposit $200 into your Chime account from your work direct deposit. It was super easy to set up, made $300, I was able to put that $300 towards my Roth IRA. So that $300 is gonna grow over 60 years and be a lot more than it is now. On Swagbucks, you can also do surveys and various other activities, but I find the really the sign-up bonuses like the Uber Eats and downloading the bank accounts, those are the more profitable things. The great thing about Swagbucks is you can also refer someone else and earn 10% lifetime of their earnings. So for instance, if I refer a friend who signs up for Uber Eats and does the $200 sign-up bonus, I then make $20 from that. And any Swagbucks that they make going forward, I also get 10%. Similarly, if you get $300 downloading Chime, which I did, then you refer your roommate or spouse, they make the $300 and then you get 10% of that, which is $30. So in total, the two of y'all make $630 combined. And this again is from the comfort of your couch. You don't have to really do anything. Side hustle number four is moonlighting. This is the only thing that you can't do from the comfort of your couch, with one exception if you do some sort of telemedicine work, which is kind of harder to come by as a resident. But with moonlighting, Depending on your specialty, it can be very lucrative. For instance, for radiology, we do contrast coverage, which means we just sit at an imaging center on the weekend and we are the physician on site while people are getting contrast. So if someone has a you know, very unlikely contrast reaction, we're there to administer epinephrine, call 911, whatever it is we need to do, we're there. But contrast coverage is about as easy as it gets. You can literally watch Netflix, study, do whatever you want and make $100 an hour. 
Of course, this varies in what you can do based one on your specialty and two, which residency program you're at. Some residency programs might be more strict on moonlighting and some specialties you might just not have time to moonlight, particularly with surgery. And then during my time as internal medicine, especially as an intern, I just really wasn't interested in doing extra clinical work on top of the 60 to 80 hours a week that I'm already doing. Moonlighting kind of comes and goes, depends on your specialty, depends on how much time you have and depends on how much extra clinical work you really want to do outside of being a resident when you're already really busy. Side hustle number five is maybe not so much a side hustle as it is a life hack, but it is taking advantage of the different credit card and bank account sign up bonuses. I've done just a little bit of this with certain credit cards that I really like, but the gist of it is you can sign up for certain credit cards and if you spend a certain amount over a period of time, you get a bonus, be it $200, $500, or in the form of credit card points. The thing you have to be careful about here is one, not opening up too many cards and affecting your credit score and two, not spending unnecessarily just to meet the bonus, but rather spending on things you would have spent on no matter what, and then you get the money or points as an added bonus. The same thing kind of goes with bank accounts. You can open up bank accounts like Chase has had these offers before where you make several hundred dollars for opening up a checking account. Again, these are easy things you can do from home to make a couple hundred bucks, but it's not necessarily the most consistent or sustainable side hustle. I have definitely taken advantage of the credit card things for travel hacking where we have basically traveled for free by taking advantage of the sign-up bonuses for the different travel credit cards. My favorite being Chase Sapphire Preferred and Chase Sapphire Reserve. I recently switched from the Preferred to the Reserve, and I highly recommend it. It's a great travel card. But because of the points that my spouse and I have accumulated with these credit cards, we travel for free and use the points for to pay for our flights and our hotels. And that just leads to dining and different activities that we end up using our money for. So overall, credit cards are a great life hack to travel for little to no money if you're smart with your points, and you can take advantage of the different perks that a lot of these credit cards have in the form of like airport lounges that you get free access to, travel insurance, where suppose your flight is canceled, the credit card company will pay for your hotel that night. That's another bonus of the Chase Sapphire, by the way. And overall, it's just a lot of fun finding different credit cards and taking advantage of their various bonuses and perks. Okay, so by definition, Side Hustle 6 isn't really a side hustle, but it's something that everyone should have, and it's Rakuten.com. Rakuten basically gives you cash back on online purchases. So for instance, I recently bought a pair of Nike shoes for $100, and Rakuten was offering 8% cash back. There's just a little Chrome extension that you add to your browser, and you activate it when you're on Nike.com, and you get cash back. So I got 8% cash back and $8. So basically, an 8% discount on the Nike shoes just by having the Rakuten browser extension and having a Rakuten account. So yes, you have to spend money to make the money here, so I definitely don't recommend signing up for Rakuten and then just going crazy spending on different websites, but if you use it smartly, you can save a little bit of money here and there, and it'll really add up over time. And those are all the side hustle things that I do, and between all these things, I probably make an extra 1000 to 1500 a month. Uh, if you're really smart with it, you can make more, and that really helps as a resident when we're not making a ton of money, and these are just different fun things that I do to help make in paying the bills a little bit easier. If you have any other ideas, I would love to hear them and please comment below. I'm all about different side hustle ideas, so please share them in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I would very much appreciate you liking the video. And if you want more of these videos, please subscribe. I would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.